Yes. And we were griping about her husband, so it went a little bit longer. I think I think so too. Yes. There we go. Okay. So, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Yay. Yeah, I think okay, we're good. Okay, great. Um, we're going to be talking about craft hacks today. If you guys couldn't hear me at all, I'm sorry. I just turned my mic off and then turned it back on. So, we're going to talk today. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Like I said, we were a little bit late today uh, because we were filming a flock talk for you guys. Yay. So, Get excited for that. That's going to come out this Saturday. Um, we can hear you. Yay, perfect. Okay, so we have some Cricut hacks that I have used for a while, that Becca's used for a while, that lots of people have tried, and we're going to test if we like them, if we think they're practical, if we don't, because some of these are just, in our opinion, not very practical. So the very first one is something that we find tried and true. And that is peeling your paper from your mat upside down. You guys know what we're talking about, going with gravity here. So I'm going to get a strong grip mat that, by the way, has been well loved. So I'm not doing this just to, like, trick you. I'm going to put this on here and grab me a brayer and brayer paper down. So if you happen to be a Cricut beginner, a lot of people are going to do this and not know any better. So you bray your paper down. And you think, okay, I'm going to pop this in my Cricut. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to peel it up. So what happens if you peel it up? Well, in extreme cases, your whole entire sheet of paper is going to curl really badly. So if you take it, traditionally, and you try and peel it up off the mat, it's going to curl. And you're also going to get some rippling on the back. I don't even know if you can see that. Which could really mess up your project if you're trying to make a, a really nice project or heaven forbid like a card base or something like that especially if there's like intricate cuts on it especially if there's intricate cuts on it so the absolute best way that we have found to do this is to bray it down really well send it through your cricket cut it and then what are we going to do you're going to throw your mat over flip it completely upside down now the the gist of this is we're letting gravity help us and we're removing our mat from our material and not our material from our mat. So instead of ripping it up like that, we're gonna rip it up like this. And if you rip it up this way, you're gonna notice there's absolutely no curling. Your paper is still straight as a stick. And yeah, now this is true for adhesive vinyl, for heat transfer vinyl, for paper. It's true for everything, so we really love um, being able to use that hack with just about anything that we're making. Now, let's talk, I'll still use this one actually, about weeding. Let's weed on the mat and let's weed off the mat. Now we are mat weeders here. We always weed on the mat if ever possible. So we have that. Here's our other one we'll weed off the mat. It's already pre-cut so I just need a weeding tool. And we're going to take the corner. And as you can see, I'm not spending time holding this down. I'm not having to use any of my hands to do anything with the vinyl except with the weeding tool. So let's just hands off, completely hands off. Use one hand to peel this up, just like that. If I can get it, one hand, and just rock back and forth, peel this up. And I mean, it's that easy. We don't call it a third hand for nothing. It's so helpful for us. Peel all these up. Done. Like literally, well, like 10 seconds if that, like a 10 second, 10 second weed. Now, if we were to do the same exact thing, but off the mat, you have nothing sticking down, nothing to help you. You have to take the corner and make sure that you're holding all of these pieces down. And then you look at, look, look at this. Honestly, it's so much more time consuming. I'm having to use different fingers to try and hold this down. 
it's going to take longer. You're more liable to mess up. The more that you have to focus on doing it one time, the more you're going to mess up, unfortunately. So, and look, we have more areas to weed as well. What do we have to weed out? Like three of these little areas in the other one. Now we're stuck doing several. All of this could be avoided and expedited if we chose to weed on the map. We love weeding on the map. Now we have two little decals that say, let's go girls. Now this is a bonus one, but you can reuse your transfer tape up to like seven times. You can use a ton of uh, transfer, like one sheet of transfer tape, you can use a ton. So the hack of reusing your standard grip transfer tape is completely correct. Please do if you haven't, it's great. Okay, let's see here. Um, this one, unfortunately, I, I think Becca might have another opinion. I don't love it, but it's taking, and I won't do the whole thing, it's taking a mat that's not very sticky. This is a well-loved light grip mat. And using painter's tape or, um, what, is, what, what is this? Thank you, Becca. Masking tape to tape down your materials that aren't sticking very well on your, on your mat. Now, the reason why I don't like this hack is because this is technically for, like, if your mat is dull, and not so much about your material, because a lot of us have materials that just don't stick down well. Um, last week, we had printable heat transfer vinyl, and it did not want to stick well. That was a material problem, not a mat problem. This is a mat problem, which means when I take tape and place it down on our mat, just like that, it's going to cut. It might not cut great. It's going to cut okay, but... The mat is the issue, not the material, which again, if it's the material's fault, keep your mat. But if your mat is so well loved that you're having to use tape to tape all the sides down, get a new mat, okay? This might cost you some project fails in the future simply because um, if your material's not stuck on your mat properly, sometimes it's not going to cut properly. That can happen a lot. So I advise you if... It's a mat problem, not a material problem. Just go ahead and get, get a new mat. Toss your mat, or you can try and clean your mat. Um, a lot of people can get some really good extra life out of their mats if you clean them. So use a baby wipe if you want to to clean off your mats, for sure. Um, let's see. You do hear a baby, the sweetest baby in the world in the background. And uh, for once, it's not my baby. Charlie is with my mom this morning. It's uh, Becca's sweet baby today. Okay. Next one. Clean your mats. Clean your projects with rubbing alcohol. Again, why would we want to do that? Why do you want to clean your projects with rubbing alcohol? Well, the biggest, the biggest reason for that is because vinyl, adhesive vinyl, let me grab a Cerol. This is the adhesive vinyl we have here. Adhesive vinyl is like a sticker, okay? So if you want to put a sticker on your car, you're not just going to take it outside and slap it on your back windshield. You're going to clean it first. Now, wh why would you want to clean it first? Because you want it to stick well for a long amount of time. Because you want it to stick well for, the, for a long amount of time, you want to make sure that that vinyl has a good chance of sticking. It's not going to be stuck on any dirt or oil or dust or anything like that. So when you use rubbing alcohol, whether that be like in a spray or in a wipe or something like that, you want to make your surface nice and sticky. So we try and do that with every vinyl project if we can. Now if it's something kind of obscure, I don't know. Sometimes you can put adhesive vinyl on some slicker woods. It's not a must for that. But if you're putting it on like a mug or glass or ceramic or a plate or something like that, I would highly suggest to clean off your uh, your surfaces. That's a great one. A great one. Okay. I do have my Easy Press set to 360 degrees. And I'm just going to share with you guys, if you don't have one of those really great, like, T-shirt grids that show you, um, like, what's the middle of the shirt, if you just have like a heat press or an easy press and a shirt and you're a beginner and you wanted to find the middle, this is something that I do urge a lot of beginners to do. 
However, once you've done it once or twice, this is one of those hacks that unfortunately is almost like, I don't know how to say it. Like it's, I don't want to say not worth your time because there are hacks that are definitely worth your time to do. But this one, if you are not a beginner anymore, I think that you could spend your time wisely doing other things. I hope that makes sense. So how we're going to get a great crease in this shirt to make sure that it is perfect and centered is taking the neck and the shoulders and lining them up perfectly straight. The necks and the shoulders. Now this is a little youth shirt, so of course it's super easy to do a little youth shirt. The larger the shirt, the harder it is to line up centered. So uh, if you have like a 4X t-shirt or something like that, you, you might honestly want to do this, even if you're not a beginner, simply because it can be really tedious to get out that measuring tape and try and measure this perfectly in the center. Uh, now again, this youth shirt, it'd be super easy to get centered up. So I'm just gonna press that for just a second, right where we had that shoulder and the neck lined up just so-so. And when you open this up, look at that crease. Look at that excellent crease right in the center of that shirt. Centered perfectly. So all you have to do when you're placing your decal down is make sure it's not like lopsided this way. But you'll get it centered every single time, which is great. Okay. Good morning. Just wanted to ask if you guys have done any rhinestones. We have not yet, but we have some fun rhinestone products that um, we are going to test out for you and share with you all. So oh. um, those will be coming up. That's really exciting. Becca, those products are nuts. They are. I'm really I'm excited. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. Okay, Tracy said, strange question. Do you think it matters what you use to clean with alcohol, like cotton wipes, paper towels, etc.? Yes, Tracy. Great question. Um, I think the best thing is like a microfiber towel something that's not going to leave behind like residue or something like that um we use paper towels a lot which honestly are probably one of the worst things you can use when you're cleaning something off because you're just you know you're pushing around some of those little fibers from the paper towel i would say like a a microfiber towel is probably what would be best okay great great question keep asking them guys keep asking them um also let me know how you guys are doing Hope you've been having a good day. Hope you had a good uh, weekend. It's so rainy here. It has been rainy. I'm so sick of the rain. Ugh. So rainy. Okay. Kat said, I'm loving seeing all the new names in the chat. Good morning and glad to see you all here. I feel the same yes. way. There are so many new names here. If this is your first time viewing here on a live with us, let us know. We want to give you a shout out. We'd love to. Um, welcome. We're excited you're here. Okay. If you are brand new here. Welcome. I don't even think I said, I don't think I said my name. Becca. We are owners and craft educators here at Oak and Lamb. And we love to basically just get crafty and share hacks with you guys and tips on how to be better or how you can get inspired. And we do not just Cricut craft. We do a lot with our Glowforge. We do a lot of sublimation. We do a lot of woodworking and home decor, all kinds of amazing things. And we, just like our friend asked about rhinestones, we will dip our toes in just about anything as well. If we see an interest in it or we see a need for it, we like to fill that need and fill that void in craftiness and just kind of, you know, help inspire you guys. So we do have an incredible membership. You can get it for $9.99 for your very first month. Click the link down below. We have hundreds of digital cut files. We have free commercial use licensing on those cut files. We have, if you were a cricketer, maybe you got one for Christmas or for Black Friday. We do have a great O&L Cricket Academy, which is phenomenal for Cricket beginners. It's amazing. Everything you need to learn and master your Cricket is in there. And if you pay that $9.99, you get into everything, all of it, including our private Facebook group, which is most of our members' favorite perk of membership because it's that amazing. Yeah. Ask any questions that you have. You can always email us hello uh, at oakenland.com if you have any questions. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, quick hack. Only if you want to. We really, we don't do this a lot. So this is one that I would say might not be worth your time. It might be in the long run worth your time just because of the money. But you can take half sheets of printable materials and use clear tape or masking tape and tape them just so-so to a full sheet of like uh, eight and a half by 11. 
uh, paper and run that through your printer if you wanted to use up some half sheets of materials. Some printers will feed half sheets. Fun fact. So check your printer might feed a half sheet. If it doesn't, you can tape it on there, um, which is great. Okay, now I have a test. I won't do this live. You're welcome. But here I have a Cricut watercolor marker and a Crayola fine tip marker. And I have went ahead and took the liberty of testing these for you guys if you want to see them. Um, I tested them filling fonts and non-filling fonts, which I'm not going to give you guys um, all of the the good good here. You can figure it out. It's like an inset instead of offset. Becca has an entire video about it. So we have I'll a member it. only video. Yeah, it's a member. Yes. <laughs> it's a member only video. Thanks, Becca. I just edit them. I don't know where they go most of the time. <laughs> I'm so glad Becca remembers. But if you are a member and you want to see Becca's like really in-depth, really detailed video about how to fill fonts, you can check that out. Uh, but we used a Crayola marker and then the Cricut pen on this side in this side. We filled them up top and didn't fill them down below. Um, now this was my mistake. This, these, mis like this brush, don't, don't take that into account. That was a, a, a me thing, my problem. Um, we do have a video about using markers in your Cricut because these are about $2 and these are about 20 So you don't, honestly, if you have Cricut markers or you're gifted Cricut markers or Cricut pens, you can use that. But I really like using off-brand pens and markers. I think that they work really, really well. Um, so yeah, here's a filled in version and you can see it filled in really nice. Now I, I literally like pasted the same exact ones. So you can see this one doesn't fill in as nice. So you would have to get your marker and fill in the areas that it did not fill super well. And again, that's a pain to be honest. If I'm gonna fill a font, I don't wanna have to do extra work. I want it to do the work for me if I'm already taking the steps in Design Space to have it filled. Now this is not a writing font. Uh, this is just something that we've kind of hacked the system. If you are an Oakenland member, you probably already know about it. Um, but yeah, so I like that this one is thick. It goes in the Cricut really well. You can see I have this little mark here. This was from the training that I did of using these Crayola markers in your Cricut. Uh, but basically you just place this down in your clamp and you see how far the tip is from the machine. And then you, it's basically eyeballing. Yes, Becca. Kathy has a great question. Do you need an adapter to use the Crayola markers? No, I love that question. Great question. You don't, you do not. It, honestly, it's just as easy as throwing this in your clamp. Super easy. You do have to eyeball around about where the tip of the marker needs to be because since this isn't a Cricut brand marker, you see there's a very little difference between like the, the I don't know, the thickness, the thickness of the marker. But this one doesn't make a satisfying click noise when you pop it in. You're not stretching it. You're not bending the plastic. You're not breaking it, I promise. Um, since this is thinner, it's really not a big deal. You just pop it in. I've made my line where to shut my clamp at and it works like a dream. Honestly, it's great. Super easy. I do have a full training video on that if you need it. Okay. But yeah, no, the filling fonts, that, that's an incredible hack. Filling fonts is amazing. This is not a writing font, but this is a way where you guys can get that look on, you know, paper or cards, or even if you wanted to do this on like leather with your engraving tip or something like that. Uh, the sky's the limit with that little hack. We love the um, the offset feature. It, it is probably within the last year from Krieger Design Space, and that's been a game changer for sure. We love that. Love it, love it. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if there's any questions. I don't want to miss anything. My markers pop out sometimes. Yes, that is a common problem. So this little clamp A, I don't know which camera, I think you're on me, I'm not sure. Clamp A has an insert. These are $2 on Cricut's website. Don't quote me on that. They're relatively cheap. I think we bought a couple extras, but your little insert might be a little bit worn out. Um, yeah, go on Cricut's website, see about it. Um, they're super easy to pop in and out though because we had that happen a couple times where it could be mid-project or it could be right when we pop the pin in. 
But sometimes that sucker would go three feet in the air and pop out of that clamp, which is super frustrating, especially if you're trying to create a project on the fly or something like that. Uh, so you might need another one of those little adapter inserts. Okay. Let's see. Continue to ask your questions, guys. I have, as they say, tried to speed through this a hair. Um, Kathy, okay, no, I answer that. Which I'm all about. I don't love that sometimes you have to have like six different adapters to do five different things. You know, I want to do something simple. I want to be able to like get something cheaper and not have to work 15 extra minutes and throw it in there. I just want to throw it in there and go. That's what I want to do. Uh, but no, the whole pack of those Crayola markers are super cheap. Super cheap. Let me see. I cannot get my insert out. So, Penny, you open your clamp. And you do have to press. You might feel like it feels unnatural. You'll just press from the bottom up, push up, and it will pop right out. So make sure your clamp is open, but it will, it, these teeth kind of will kind of come together and it'll pop right out. Then you just pop it back in, just like that. Yep. Good question, good question. Oh. So I just use the Cricut markers. Yeah, you can use the Cricut markers. I mean, use whatever works. That is kind of the whole point of, like, hacks. They're great hacks for those that it works for. Some of these hacks don't work for anybody. Some people are completely content doing their own thing. They don't need hacks or they feel like they do best without them. That's the beauty of them is that they're here if you need them. And if you don't, please do what works best for you. We're in no way here being like, this is the only way to do something, for sure. Don't be afraid. I promise it won't break. I, I'm not going to promise that. That's a, that's a foolish thing for me to promise. I don't think we've break. never had one break, and we are rough. <laughs> we are very rough, but no. Open your clamp and then pop it out. I promise. Trust me, Penny. And watch hers break, and then she'll never trust me again. <laughs> I swear, I don't think it will. Let, I gotta be honest though, Rachel's pretty rough. If she hasn't broken one, it's true. Uh, so, Laurel, yeah, you're right. She says I find the cricket ones dry out quickly. I almost think that's like a a tactic, like when baby companies tell you you need to replace the bottles every six months. They just want more money, I swear. Um, so I honestly think they have made the cricket pins dry out quick on purpose, so you have to keep buying them, and they are expensive. It's like fifteen bucks for five pins. A whole pack of them is like $30. You can get 10 Crayola markers for less than $2. You know, in my mind, whatever time, if I would spend five extra minutes adjusting the clamp or something, it's worth it for that much money that I'm saving. That's what I think. That's what I think. Um, Jan, I think they're talking about kids, and Jan said twins are a good place to stop. Looks like you and uh, you and Anna did your mom in, Becca. Did your mom in? I have no comment. No comment. Understandable. That's why I love you. Give us alternatives. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, that's again. As much as we love being here and just inspiring you guys and wanting you to craft all day, there is a lot to be said about budgeting and time and money and if you could get better tools for a cheaper price like we're all about trying to help you guys save money because we know no one can craft without paying the bills and if you can't pay the bills you sure can't craft and we just want to help you along with that yep rachel if you could just run over and help me that'd be great it won't budge penny i'm on my way i'm on my way I think that you're being real delicate with your machine. Which machine do you have? Penny, you could also just pack it up and head this way. Yeah. Come, come to the studio. You we'll can, take it out for you. You can squeeze our babies. This sounds like a win-win. This sounds like a good, a good thing. My craft room is coming along. I have only cut vinyl, HTV, and paper with my Cricut. Brenda. Breaking news. Penny got it out. She got it out. Congratulations, Penny. You are welcome. You just needed a little encouragement. You did. Yes. We're so glad yep. we could be the encouragement for you, Penny. We're so glad. So glad. 
Good morning from Florida. Just tuned in. Love seeing you, Miss Barbara. Hello. I wish I was in Florida. I hope that you're doing well. We're honestly wrapping up this live already. It's it's been a it's been a short and sweet one. We were talking about some common cricket hacks that I could do blindfolded. And I'm letting you guys ask some phenomenal questions that you have because often I do a lot of cricket hack videos. I love doing cricket hack videos, and you do. But testing them live and being able to answer questions live is something we just don't do. If you like these types of videos like Q&As or small demos mixed with being able to kind of interact with you guys, let us know and we can get more of these on the schedule for sure. Oh, <clears throat> Becca wants me to ask what your favorite cricket hacks are. Let me know. Let me know. Oh, Megan, am I the only one disappointed that Rachel isn't wearing a crown during this hack video? How else would everyone know that she's the hack queen? Megan. Becca, well, that is an excellent point, Megan. Becca could have made me. I feel like I feel like with all her oodles of time that she has free right now, that she could have made me a crown. The, the baby's noises when he eats food makes my day. It's like my favorite part of the day. Like literally the whole, mm, 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 mm. I'm like, bud, me too. Food makes me that happy too. Yeah. If you missed it over in the private Facebook group, we shared a picture of all the babies together for the first time because um, Charlie and Rachel had COVID last week, so we couldn't get together. It was killing us all. Yes. Anyway, all the babies got together, all the O&L kids. We shared a picture of it, um, and Rachel brought cupcakes, and so Sam had one for the first time, and it was quite the scene. It kind of looked like a chocolatey murder scene by the time he was finished with it. But he, And then he screamed bloody murder when it was time to be done and take a bath. It was, he is a Rachel Cupcake fan. Oh, yeah. He is the sweetest. But yeah, he makes little, little like happy noises the whole time he's eating. I'm the like, whole time. I'm like mm -hmm. me too, bud. The me whole time. Too. Yeah. It's the best. Loving the baby sounds, I know. Um, um, Anna, my machine is not reading the lines for cut and print. How do you clean the machine so it works? Rachel, this is a great question. Yes. So there's a sensor, and Rachel, you have a video on cleaning it, don't you? I do. There's so if you're interested, now it's not like get your Windex out and scrub it. Basically, it's suggestions, what you're doing, yeah. basically, is trying to get debris out of places debris shouldn't be. That's basically the whole point. Because now, especially the makers that can cut wood and different chipboards and got the rotary blade, with all those adaptive tools comes a lot of debris and a lot of mess and a lot of things that can get where it's not supposed to be. So um, there are different things you can do. I would get a brush, a makeup brush, whatever you have, and try and clean out that little sensor. There is a cleaning video. I can link it for you guys after the live as well. And try and clean out that sensor. Now, also, there's some other reasons, like it might be your lighting. Try turning some lights off. Try turning more lights on. If your material is like a glossy material, I've had people say that they've put like matte um, clear tape over the registration marks, which by the way, it's not a registration box anymore. It's like registration mark, like little bitty, it's crazy. But Anna, please let me know um, if any of those work. Barbara, this is a great question, Barbara. Do you have a schedule for the live videos? Not really. Um, and that is a blessing and a curse. We know how much you guys love a good structured schedule. Um, however, there is a lot of content going out on YouTube these days. Uh, during the new year, me and Becca got together during a meeting and we were like, let's cut back in X ways so that we can dive in better in Y ways. And let me... For some reason, we just ended up diving in head first every which way we can. So we have a lot of content going out here on YouTube and, of course, lots of things in the works for members only and all that great stuff. Uh, with, with that being said, families are growing and people are getting sick and things are happening. So we enjoy being able to say we don't have a strict uh, schedule for you all. However, we've had we, to adapt. We've learned to adapt. However, we do do a lot better at scheduling them out for the next for the next couple of weeks. So you can go on the homepage on YouTube and see all of our upcoming lives. We do our flock talks that are usually premiered, so you can see them a day or two before they're even um, up. 
Uh, but thank you for the question, and we we know that you guys love structure, and we hope to give you that eventually. We have some good cricket hacks that they're sharing here with oh, us. Yeah, Kathy says see. her favorite thing is moving around the mats to use less mats, so putting like yes. different layers in yes. different spots love on it. the mat. I, that's love one it. of my favorites as well. Uh, we have my mind blown hack is making a color we'll palette in Illustrator and bringing it into Design Space. Right. Like what? No one ever told me. You're right. welcome. It's one of my favorites as well. It's amazing. And who would know if you didn't like? If you guys are interested in making your own cut piles or interested in uh, any type of like graphic design like that, we do have an incredible um, illustrator course that Becca has just kind of given her heart and soul into. Uh, there's 33 videos in there. You can learn how to make cup cows, cup cup cows, cut files for yourself. It's incredible if you want to learn, do it for sure. Um, Susan said, "I love the flock talks. I'm so glad. I'm glad that you love them. This one's gonna be fun on Saturday." We're, we're exposing our husbands. Oh, it's totally relatable. I think we're going to have so many comments that are like, my husband does that too. or And I can't wait to hear some of what you all have to say about your husband. You know what's going to be hard? Titling this one. I know. There are I have too no many idea. good There's titles. There's too many good there ones. There are too many. And that sometimes doesn't happen. Sometimes we have like 20 titles to choose from. Wait, I have one already. Okay, don't say yeah, it. I won't. It's going to be a surprise. Yeah. But it's going to be a really, really fun vlog talk. Um... I cracked my mat, but saved the pieces and used them for weeding small vinyl. That's genius. Because I was just saying, if, if you're just starting out with your Cricut and you only have a couple of mats, like, and in, in, for instance, you uh, cut one mat, want to weed it, but you also want to go ahead and cut another one while you're weeding. If you only have one mat, that's hard. And you definitely don't want to weed off the mat because it's miserable. It is miserable. So that's genius. I love that. I love that. I took the AI Passport. course. Holy smoke. So much information. I like hopefully in a good way. Um, but yes, yeah, so many of our friends are taking the illustrator course and absolutely loving it. I'm loving seeing everything that you all are doing. Um, it's so encouraging to see good results from something that I have kind of poured my heart into for you all because illustrator isn't just a way that I make a living illustrator started out as that but I didn't have to do it after that it became a hobby afterward yeah. and I love it so much um and use it so much that I just knew that I had to teach it to you all so uh, it's really exciting and you all seem to absolutely love it and one thing I love about it is that when once you take that illustrator course it's like you unlock so many different uh possibilities for you to create your own cut files or manipulate files that you see or make things for other people that you i mean having the know-how which you guys know the more you have under your belt as a crafter the the more open the world is to you like the world is your oyster especially when you get to know all this knowledge so uh learning and mastering something like illustrator for cut file creation is it's amazing it's great. Yeah, let us know. Do you guys, are, are several of you interested in the Illustrator course? Is it something that you would like us to do a discount on, run a little bit of a, a, little, sale. a little sale on, maybe do a little bit more education so that you can get um, an idea of what the course is for? I know several here already have the course and have already yeah. jumped in and are doing great, but let me know. Yeah. Well, ah. that's what I think, bud. Ah. Me too. Me too. We're eating Hawaiian Delight right now. You know, this was my kids' favorite when they were little. Hawaiian yes. Delight is pineapple and I guess banana or something. That sounds delish. Mango it, maybe? Hawaiian, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It is definitely heaven. I'm giving him the tiniest bites ever so that this lasts forever because as soon as it's gone, all hell will break loose. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, guys. No, we're we've, on, got, we've got a few more bites. We're on a little, uh, oh my gosh, he is. The Guys, I can't. I have one, but looking at another one, it's just too much for me. Oh, he's Let's so. Let's talk about yours yesterday, the passy thief. He is a <laughs> passy thief. Hysterical. He will yank any passy out of any baby's mouth anywhere and try it on out himself. He loves his passing. Well, and chaps were the same as his. Like, yes. they're the same pacifiers, same, same but same Sam's are not the same. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um,. Nope, no passy is safe around Charlie. No passy is safe. No. But guys, literally, I love these. I love I love all of our boys. Our, our little, oh, and fallow. But you guys know what I mean. Like, 
the newer additions. Yes. They're just, what a blessing they are. Sam is 12 months and Charlie is 9 months, so they are very, very close in age. Yeah. He'll be 10 months next week. Yeah. So they're they're close. They're really close. But Charlie's already walking. Sam's getting there. Sam yeah. has a, a couple extra pounds just, to carry around than Charlie does. Just a few. I'd carry him forever if it means he'd stay that chunky. Oh, chunky. Oh, chunky. oh yep. But I do also want to thank you guys for being so flexible, for being so incredible and loving and caring through all of this, through even before Charlie was born, like just through Charlie and all the changes that Oak and Lamb has had and uh, the little setbacks like COVID here and there. And just you guys have been so incredible with your outpouring of love and support and patience and willingness to fluctuate with us and we're so thankful for that we hope that you are excited for what's to come with oak and lamb as much as we're excited to to be here and to uh, you know announce fun things and to carry on with you um through this company and we're you know, we're just so thankful thank y'all so much he's making motorcycle noises now he's also trying to tear the microphone off he can if he wants to. yeah 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 but we're so happy that you guys have been here today i love it I was wondering if Rach was jealous of the chunkiness. Cat, I'm so jealous of the chunkiness. Like, I can't even. I Charlie can't. is like tall and skinny. He's, it's hysterical. He's tall it's and hysterical. skinny. And I want, like, not. I love Charlie with every fiber of oh, my yeah. being. I think that he is perfect. He you is guys perfect. know what I mean when I say this. I want, like, a busted can of biscuits, baby. And Sam fits the bill. Just perfect. Sam is is twelve months old. He turned a year old on the third, and he's in it last night an eighteen His month paws. eighteen month um, jammies. And I had to like su it's like you know lay on the bed and suck in your gut so that you can zip your jeans. It's the same thing with with his jammies. It I really is. He's yeah. He's so yummy. He's so adorable. I texted Beck and I said it will take restraint not to like bite him, and oh, I mean yeah. that purposefully. I do. Yep. Uh, Cat, I did want to. The Lord gave me what I needed. Charlie's absolutely perfect, but nothing's like a, a chunk. Oh, a chunky baby. I love a chunky baby. Yep. Anyway, we are going live on Thursday. Um, yes. I, we have another court appointment on tomorrow, so we will, unfortunately will not be going live <laughs> in the member only, unless I do something later. We might be able to work yeah, that out absolutely. tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. But, but again, yeah, stay thank tuned you for all that. For your flexibility, yeah. we appreciate it. Yeah. We're gonna have an organic going out tomorrow morning here on the YouTube channel. So, um, wait on that. It's going to be a great one. Uh, thank you for being here. We're going to be live. We're going to be having fun. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We love you all. Bye, everyone.